Welcome back. Glad you are still with us. This is Good Morning Kenya and we are still having a conversation revolving around this day that we are celebrating, the 8th of March, a day where we get to celebrate the International Women's Day. And we welcome you to also share with us your thoughts in regards to this day. The theme for this year is about women in leadership, and it continues to say achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. COVID-19 did bring out some harsh realities when it comes to some of these challenges that women have been facing since 110 years ago when we started celebrating this day. So as we celebrate this day, what do you choose to challenge? That is the official hashtag that is being used globally. Hashtag, I uh, choose to challenge what? What is that barrier that you are choosing to challenge when it comes to encouraging and supporting women as we celebrate International Women's Day, share with us using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya on Twitter, at KBC Channel 1, at Jane Mumboy is how you can be able to interact with me on Twitter. I'm seeing so much feed in regards to this particular hashtag that is choose to challenge and there's uh, somebody who goes by the name Feminati. I choose to challenge gender bias, stereotypes and inequality in our communities. We need to learn uh, the difference between equality and feminism and advocate for social and environmental justice when it comes to addressing issues evolving around women. Keep sharing them as we continue with this conversation. And so right now we want to have this particular conversation about women in leadership with our third guest joining us this morning here in studio. We have with us Ms. Petronella Mukaindo, who is the Deputy Director and uh, Head of Research and Compliance Division working with the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Good morning. Good morning, Jane. Karibu sana to Good Morning Kenya. Thank you for making time. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. Yes. Now before we get deep into this conversation as we are celebrating International Women's Day yes how does it resonate with you as a woman and especially in a leadership capacity uh, Wow thank you for that uh, Jane um, uh, today is a wonderful day and uh, we we are able to celebrate the milestones uh, mm -hmm. that as Kenyan women and as women in the world we have made uh, in various fields whether you know social uh, political economic uh, circles uh, to be able to be where we are on a personal level um, yeah. it resonates with me as a woman because um, you know back then um, when I was growing up actually it was not automatic that f a, a girl child um, had to go to school mm -hmm. um, and so where parents were caught up uh, in a dilemma uh, if this was not enough then it, it was automatic that the, the, the boy child gets the education and mm -hmm. the girl child remains at home yeah. so I'm happy that um, you know because of that uh, 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 push and, and women who came before us who have been pushing for this uh, equality for these spaces, then people like us, um, you know, were able to get an education, were able to um, surpass some of these barriers mm -hmm. and, and, and had parents who then embraced that yeah. and were able to, 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 take her to, to take us to school. Yes. And hence, uh, we are here. We are here. Yeah. And I love the fact that you've actually brought in the whole aspect of the role that parents have to play in this yeah. because I believe it all starts from the home setup. You know, these yes. issues that we get to experience when we are now in the grown-up world, in the working space, and especially women in leadership, it all starts with how one was brought up. And mm -hmm. this is something I've been asking all my guests this morning. Mm -hmm. How do you feel your upbringing mm -hmm. has contributed to the person that you are mm -hmm. in your various capacities as mm -hmm. a leader? Yeah, thank you. And you're right. Yes, charity begins at home, that's for sure, because um, all of us uh, come from a, you know, a certain family uh, setup and it is where that uh, values are nurtured it mm. is where uh, gender stereotyping begins to to grow yeah. be, uh, between uh, boys uh, very between, casually yeah very casually you know guys don't do this uh, it is the boys role to do to do this um, and, and so um, even as we speak uh, of uh, equality at international um, at international level, at these big spaces, it's important for our audience to also be um, to understand that um, at the end of the day, if there is no uh, equality, there is no justice, um, mm -hmm. there is no that space at the home uh, setup, 
um, then nothing else um, is, is possible. Because yes. I think sometimes we are so um, um, uh, absorbed with changing the world mm. that sometimes we forget to change the little spaces. Yes. And, and I don't want here to resonate with the words of Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. uh, once uh, the first lady, um, fa first lady of the US, uh, who once said that unless, uh, for instance, human rights have uh, meaning in the small spaces closest to home. And this could be in, in schools even, mm. in our religious organizations, whether it be it uh, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, it does not matter. Yes. At home in the family, how are we bringing up? And so for me, um, um, it's just having that home environment that then supported my, my especially my education, yeah. for me was, was key. And then parents who understood that uh, it does not matter that whether you are a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. Uh, you can go to school and you can make a living but this is not to say it has been easy because there has been you know various social you come out of the society and you realize there are it's various societies it's a, it's a whole other reality yeah it's one thing to get the space uh, but it's quite another to actually um you know get your agenda or you know get uh, get your agenda across um, mm -hmm. because then there is the perceptions and the stereotypes. Now, how would you characterize with. that, uh, basing it on your own very personal experience, mm -hmm. how would you characterize that journey mm -hmm. to getting to where you are today? Because mm -hmm. you're coming from a home setup that has mm -hmm. been very encouraging, very accommodating of you as a person, mm -hmm. not being based on your gender. Mm -hmm. And then you come out to the world, <laughs> it's a whole other ball game. Getting mm -hmm. to where you are today, mm -hmm. how would you characterize that journey? Um, thank you, Jane. Um, may I just add something here sure. with regard to um, my upbringing? Because I, I think it might sound like, you know, it is that easy, you have all support. Mm -hmm. One of the things we realize, even as we celebrate today's uh, International Women's Day, mm -hmm. is the role, um, the dis disproportionate um, work and, and domestic work that, that women, you know, carry. Mm. So for me as a girl, I mean, we grew up, we, we did all the chores, most of the chores actually. We fetched firewood, I was in that uh, setup. Uh, went to fetch water, you know, cooked. Um, cooked and cooked again, and that was when we were using the three, the, the, the three stones. Three stones. <laughs> Actually, even went to graze our father's cattle. We mm -hmm. did that. So in that setup, then um, you realize that I mean, it, it's not easy for girls to have come through it because what happened is that you are so absorbed with the chores. Some even raising younger siblings, mm. um, that that education and other things it's, it's unheard of yeah and, and so for me actually uh, being taken from that uh, very initial family setup uh, to go to a boarding school that for me uh, set a different uh, path from my uh, my peers if i may look mm -hmm. back because it was from going away to a boarding school um which was uh, you know in a more urban should i say setup, setup but yeah. then I, I got more exposure uh, met other people um was able to get better grades, uh, which I would not have gotten actually in that had, uh, in that rock, had I not been mm. moved. And from there then it, it set um, a trip from primary school, was able to go to a national school, Kenya High, I'll mention that. Yeah, the second <laughs> yeah. Kenya High guest we're having today. <laughs> yeah, Kenya <laughs> High School, and, and then from there to, to campus and, and to mm. be able to do law, uh, mm -hmm. what I was uh, able to, to do. So um, for me, just having that, but also to realize then the, 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 there is always something pulling you mm. um, in terms of, if at home, domestic. When you go at, at, at the professional space, then you realize it's one thing to get in there. Like I'll give my personal experience. When I started yes. uh, professionally, uh, you would uh, go to, rep you were sent by your boss to go represent the organization, right? Mm. Uh, when you get there, um, they, they know somebody, uh, they are looking for, they are asking you, well, did you come with Umeleta Nani? <laughs> Umeleta Nani, yeah. Umeleta Nani, you know, they, they expect that you are carrying a briefcase for somebody there. Then now when they see you, so you almost have to start from a point of um, approving, you know, uh, receiving approval, proving yourself to us before we can even listen, um, to, listen you. to you. Mm. Um, so when I was starting up, that was a challenge. But I'm glad that, uh, especially in the organization I am in right now, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, yes. I feel I have more you know, equal space uh, with my colleagues to be able to, to, to articulate and run my uh, agenda. agenda. Yeah. Now, what more do you feel we need to do to just make this narrative about this stereotyping that mm -hmm. comes with women in positions of power that you have to justify yourself mm -hmm. as to holding that position mm -hmm. to move to a space where you don't have to justify this and more mm -hmm. so having this conversation with the opposite gender and just 
because it's something that has also been gr drilled into their sure. minds. They have grown up understanding that when it comes to leadership, mm -hmm. men are the ones who are at the forefront. But also mm -hmm. now, change, times are changing. True. Women are also coming to the forefront. How mm -hmm. then do we have that conversation mm -hmm. with them from what you have mm -hmm. seen interacting with these different spaces and gentlemen in different uh, capacities as well? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, First, let me say this. It's not a favor for women to be at the, at the, at the table, mm -hmm. at the decision-making table, and we must, um, I mean, we must embrace that. Um, and because uh, women are human. Yes. And I uh, will say here that, uh, you know, women are not uh, children of a lesser God. Um, so we are saying that all are equal. Um, you know, they have strengths, they have capabilities. Let's mm -hmm. give them equal chance uh, to be able to, to participate in all circles in political circles, public yes. representation, in terms of economic, let, let them be able to own land, let them be able to own property, and as well as other social, social spaces. But I agree that we need to bring uh, men into that conversation. Uh, one of the things Jane will agree with me, you know, it's, it's very easy to change the laws. Mm -hmm. And here I might mention that one of the setbacks we have is that we have discriminatory laws still in our statute books, yes. which tells you that as a woman, because you are a woman, you cannot do A, B, C, D. I'll mention one of them with regard to law of succession, mm -hmm. for instance. So there are those barriers that are legally there and enshrined in our laws that we, our parliamentarians will need to get rid of. But beyond that, it is easy to change the law, but what to do with the mental attitude? Mm. That's one of the hardest things. Deep-seated issues. Deep -seated that you're issues. With. And how do we deal with that? We need to deal with um, the society perceptions. We need to do more civic education. We need to start, like I mentioned, charity begins at home. The way we are raising our boys yes. um, uh, to view their, 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 their sisters, um, you know, the way we are raising. Um, um, you know, our, our children mm -hmm. in school, how, how our teachers even treat it. Uh, are you saying, them. no, no, you, you know, you can do that without knowing because what happens is that when you believe something and it's so inside you, most of the times without even knowing, you yeah, project it, it. Mm. either to the learners you're teaching, whether to, if I'm, an, I'm in an employment setting, yeah. to my team yeah. without even realizing it. Um, whether it's, it might be as simple things as, as Jane, you're in a boardroom and I rush to, to, to give a, a, a chair to the guest male, and, and, and if it was a female, I am a bit uh, oh, distraught. Mm. I'm a bit, they are subtle, but we don't realize it. Or a, a lady says something across the table, and you're like, yeah, Lala, let's hear from them. And the man says the, the same, same thing, thing, or you not as good as going. We're like, yes, yes, the point is there. So we see those subtle things that seem to, um, to put women down mm. and their points of view. So, um, and one thing to encourage our men, because they're our brothers, they're our fathers, they are husbands, that um, it is not a loss when you encourage your wives, when you encourage and empower your, uh, your girls, your nieces. The women in your lives. They are women in your lives, because what I believe in is this. Eh? Once you have empowered children in the family setting, yes. you have empowered, actually, when you have an empowered woman, let's say as a wife, you have an empowered, you know, child, family, because mm. the children will be empowered. That is where then we have empowered communities, um, we have churches that are empowered, and at the end of the day, then we can talk of an empowered society. Okay. So, so it's not a loss. When we are out there, then you realize even in terms of the poverty levels, if you look at what a woman is able to do, mm. um, then you realize it actually causes a whole you know, paradigm shift, even in the way that particular family or society uh, believes. Okay. One are the days when we used to be told, Jane, that, uh, um, you know, the boys in Joanna's idea, you know, the old parents in old age. Mm. Now, uh, uh, it's, it's no longer, it's not, uh, the women, the are girls, the, the daughters are, are actually doing that. And I've had reports of, you know, uh, many of such um, life experiences that it's actually girls, you know, do that. So it's not a loss, really. And we are not saying um, that... By saying that we are women advocating for women equality, we are saying now women will become men, men will become women. No, we are just saying let us all be together in the table. Let us all give uh, yes. equal chances, equal opportunities, because that is the only way a society can grow without right. um, uh, underlooking or overlooking mm -hmm. half of its population. I completely agree with you. It just yeah. reminded me of, uh, I was in a different space and there yeah. was that conversation about guys just talking about um, how many children they'd like to have, either yes. boys or girls. And yeah. there was one in particular who said, I just want girls. 
because oh, I wow. know my daughter will take care of me in my old age. Exactly. As opposed to a son. And in as much as we don't want to agree with that, what is the reality on ground? Mm -hmm. Girls have been brought up to understand that their work is to take care of the other. And boys have been brought up to understand that their work is to provide. So you find that nurturing is not as much in the mm -hmm. male docket and provision is not as much in the mm -hmm. female uh, docket. We've drawn a line True. and consequently discriminated on the other at one point or the other. Now. Um, Allow me to take you back, and uh, you had mentioned issues to do with laws and policies. Yes. And I want us to look at two issues. Number one, let's start with issues to do with representation yeah. in line with the laws. You know, um, mm. let's just start with a very good example, the gender rule. rule. Principle so is mm. not a rule. The gender mm. principle. Mm. It is meant to just ensure equal representation. Sure. Critics on the other side argue that in as much as we want equal representation, where are these women? Why aren't they presenting themselves for these opportunities? Where do you think the problem lies? There could be the opportunities available, but women are not showing up to take on these opportunities. Thank you, a very good question. First, let's all agree that women are there. Mm -hmm. Women are there, they are qualified. There are very many women uh, who can take up these leadership yes. positions. Um, so there is no excuse that we have, ca you know, capacity, you know, deficit it's in terms of women. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but also in terms of, um, now when it comes to, to that uh, gender representation, we must understand that it's, it's based on the, you know, historical um, injustices, injustices that, that we've had, mm -hmm. that we've not had women uh, being able to, you know, get those opportunities to be able to sit at, at the table, to be able to make uh, decisions, to, make, uh, to be able to, pa to, to participate um, um, uh, uh, publicly. Uh, so it is important that then they are given, um, they are not actually given, there is that provision mm. to be able to bring um, that, you know, equality, to be able to correct that injustice. They are called temporary special measures yes. to be able to correct that. And uh, now, why aren't women coming out? First, we must understand the context mm -hmm. where we are coming from, right? Um, how is campaign and elections in Kenya? For Looking instance, at the politics. Just, just look at the politics. You can even look at the by-elections that we are holding or have held. You mm. can look at the 27 elections. How are they? Mm. It's not that women don't want to come out. But look at the systematic barriers that are there. Look at the obstacles. I'll mention one. For instance, campaign financing. How much does it take to conduct um, a, a successful campaign in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Massive. Um, you know, uh, resources. Yeah. But now we are saying that those are the same areas that women have already been marginalized uh, in. Mm. Yeah. So when it comes to, um, for instance, I uh, mentioned, when it comes to land on ownership, because that's one of the biggest controversial uh, biggest, exactly, conversations. Exactly, in terms of property and also a, 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 a good resource, you know, uh, and from where all other things flow from, uh, mm. economic empowerment and all that, is that only about 1% actually are on land. Statistics have shown, yet, never forget, women provide over 80% of the labor force mm -hmm. on that agricultural land. So what we are saying is that then without that opportunity, without um, um, empowering economically, then it becomes harder for even for them to be able to participate. Yes. Something else be, besides the economic is, is also about the gender stereotyping mm -hmm. at home, the gender roles. Um, look at the way in terms of the um, disproportionate burden that women carry in terms of caregiving, in terms of child rearing. Mm. Actually, as a professional woman, you realize that's one of the, <laughs> one of the greatest obstacles. Trust me, I understand. The house <laughs> manager just uh, picked the bags and left in the morning. You have to call an understanding boss to understand mm. uh, that you will not be at work. So, I mean, those are all issues that women have to carry. So that you find that, that then we have to make... Um, our society and our structures more accommodative for women mm. to, to, to be out there. Okay. Other things that, that put up are those, um, you know, uh, customary, uh, you know, beliefs, eh? mindsets culture. about women, culture, mm. that, you know, women, you, you cannot. And, and we, uh, by the way, when you, when, you, when you start campaign, we'll ask, are you married? How many, are you a divorcee? Now, those become the issues that yes. we are going to discuss, rather than what do you have on the table? You're what is your agenda? Mm. Are you married? Do you, I mean, that, that, that becomes a thing. And what do we start saying? We start um, bringing sometimes very um, insult, Irre you know, insulting, irrelevant, irrelevant things, insults. Yeah. And so what do women do? Um, being the, do you lose your family or do you 
you know, so, so sometimes women find themselves in a place where okay. they have to choose and it does not have to be that way. They want to be out there to be able to actually participate. So we have to deal um, with the violence. Um, the women experience a lot of violence, mm. uh, sexual violence. We have documented that as a commission yes. in the 27 elections. We need to deal with um, even the media, you know, people, people trolling you, people just saying all, all sorts of things um, and, and that uh, in itself then becomes um, very inhibiting uh, for women to be able to participate so at an equal um, playing you know, field. Place, playing so it's not a question men. of women failing to show up, is what does showing up come with? Exactly. What, what does it come with? Mm. And when I show up also, you know, how many, uh, you know, being elected, because again of the stereotypes that I'm talking about, the mindsets mm. that, that we really need um, um, to, to come out of the mindset that, you know, um, for you to be a good woman, uh, you know, it's that very docile, don't, don't raise your hand. Just to be seen and not speak. to be heard. Yes, to be seen, not to be heard. And that is why our Judinjeke, sorry, uh, you know, and other, uh, you know, our traditional set up mechanism initially, a woman was, you know, you are not to be seen. Actually, in some instances, not even to be seen. Mm. <laughs> if somebody was to speak through you, and for you, sorry, yes, for you. For, yeah. you, to be spoken for. But, but that is changing. And, um, but just to reiterate that women are there. Women have the qualifications. Women are willing to get out of there. But we need our men. We need our husbands. We need our fathers. We need our colleagues mm. um, to, to, to be able to accept and, and support us and to also realize that um, for us to really... Meaning, um, uh, women empowerment does not mean a loss on, on their it's part. It's not a competition. It's not a competition, really. Because it's not at we all. lost the essence of what equality means. Yes. All right. Now, this brings me to now the part two of that particular question in regards to laws and policies. The implementation of okay. some of these laws and policies that are supposed to create that environment, but still they are just pretty on paper. And... Starting with examples as just looking at the work setup, yeah. organizations, many of them have policies that govern, you know, issues to do with sexual violence mm. as it thrives in their workspace. Yeah. But are they being observed? Yeah. Are even the employees aware that these mm. laws and policies do exist? Mm. How do we go about with the implementation process to just ensure that every space is mm. safe and especially for women who want mm. to take up these leadership positions? Mm. That, that's so true. Um, a good question. At employment that's that's another environment that mm. of course uh, has to be facilitative um, and, and sexual harassment has been you know one of the main uh, hindrances uh, to, to women pursuing I've had personal you know experience uh, of people um, uh, people who have had to resign jobs why because certain managers decided to be inappropriate mm. uh, towards them and, and you you know they prefer to quit than, than to do that others persevere painfully it's a cat mouse um, uh, and now I must loud because many organizations nowadays mm. have um, sexual harassment policies uh, but as you rightly put it, how, how often do we actually utilize this? Do employees understand um, that these sort of policies exist? Because it's important that they understand in order to be able to realize them. Yeah. When it comes to businesses, how many have complaints mechanisms? You see, in you place. know, because we are looking at, uh, apart from the employment in that formal setting, we have people working in minings, mines, you know? Mm. We have people working in informal sectors, juakalis, businesses. Um, how, how, how do they... Um, how do they actually utilize uh, their internal complaints, um, you know, mechanism, mechanism uh, process? Yeah. And that's one of the things as a commission we've been trying to push through the uh, business and human rights um, uh, program so that businesses embrace human rights mm -hmm. uh, in their dealings and they are able, one of the things they need to, to, to do is to set up a redress mechanism. So, th so that would be yet another way of actually ensuring these environments, uh, 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 you know, are, 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 are good, uh, you know, conducive for women to work in. But outside the workspace, our criminal process then just to be also facilitative mm. in terms of, because these are criminal offenses, rape, sexual, you know, they, they just um, being able to, to make them easy enough uh, be able to make them, qu uh, you know, quicker enough uh, to be able to uh, enable our women, our girls, to be able to get uh, their, uh, you know, uh, justice and, and in a speedy way. Yes. So that, that, that is key. Yes, speaking of justice and, you know, it, just seeing yourself getting justice till the end, that brings me to now that reporting mechanism mm -hmm. when you go to 
even these reporting stations, mm -hmm. how are they? What is the reception there? Mm -hmm. Do you even have somebody who can listen to you without mm -hmm. judging you or criticizing you or assigning blame on you who's going mm -hmm. to report the case? And this mm -hmm. is regardless of your gender, whether you are female or male, but you have been violated in a way that mm -hmm. you feel has gone against your rights. Mm -hmm. Looking at these spaces that are supposed to be safe for reporting yeah. and consequently getting justice, how do we make them better? Because you find even some, mm -hmm don't even understand, don't even know that certain forms are mm. actually representations of violence in different spaces. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Jane. That, that is one of the main challenges because you realize when women go to report, uh, girls or you, you, you are there, you are the, the guardian, you are going to report with a child, then the first obstacle, first of all, remember, at the family setting, you faced an obstacle like don't report, mm. it is stigma, mm -hmm. uh, don't go out Tell there to report. Gina so that's one. In the event you are wrong enough, quotes, uh, to go then out to the justice system, then you find another roadblock. Yeah. So, but, but I must mention here that one of the improvements that we've seen, mm -hmm. um, uh, of, uh, you know, in recent past, is the introduction of gender desks, yes. whereby then we have, uh, you know, um, uh, people, female people who understand, um, who are, you know, who handle these cases, and, and they have been sensitized and all that. Mm. But that is a work in progress. That is something that needs to be done more, because then what happens is that as a woman, you are, you are re-traumatized again. Um, from the recording of the statement, you go to the courtroom, the, the collection of evidence, you have again to face the, the, the victim. Um, it's, it's a whole um, uh, excruciating process for, uh, for, for the women. And remember by that time, especially when we, when we talk, especially of even defilement cases, this is a, a point where you'll find um, uh, even parents and parents, there is collusion, compassion, sometimes even by the chiefs mm. in the rural setups, uh, trying to compel the guardian uh, to be able to let go of the case. We'll negotiate, we'll pay you two goods, we'll pay you this amount of thousands. So then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, then you're frustrated. Not exactly, justice is not served, and that becomes a, a problem. Now, there's a tweet that has come here, and I'd love to just hear your response. This is Muhe Wabima, who's watching from Gong, uh, Gong, and he goes on to say, from where I come from, from, women are over empowered I really don't understand this empowerment story I think first we should teach our women to deal with empowerment before it's given to them Wow <laughs> interesting observation <laughs> um, I, I just would like to ask a rhetoric question yeah. do, do, do we say that of the male gender of our brothers that let's first of all Power, we watch you, <laughs> we put you on probation, we see how you handle power. You see again, um, what we are talking about, it, it's about um, mental stereotypes. stereotypes. Because then we are, we are bringing, we are talking of agenda that has been historically ex uh, excluded. Mm -hmm. And so there is that tendency to feel, um, uh, are we, it's a favor, so when you come here, you better uh, behave in quotes because um, uh, you are not here in the first place. But I would love to know which place is that because yeah. I would want to go there myself <laughs> and live there. <laughs> they are empowered. <laughs> but, but then I, I think the, the question is, is that a bad thing actually? Is that a bad thing to be over empowered? And when we say over, mm. um, I, I would like more details for instance, in what aspects, in, in what ways? Is it, are we talking of economically? Are we just talking of women can speak up? Um, uh, are we talking of that our customary traditions do not longer hold them back? They mm -hmm. have everything put together. Yes. I would like to, to, to hear those details in order then to, 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 to be able to say that actually they are very empowered, but I would want to actually live there. All right, <laughs> so there you are, Muhia. Maybe you could give a uh, rejoinder in regards to that. What are you specifically referring to when you talk about over empowerment and saying that? First, we should teach our women to deal with empowerment before it's given. I will reserve my it comments. Mm, it cannot yeah. be given something that is rightfully yours. But now, uh, let's now come to the programs that your organization is mm -hmm. currently embarking on, and especially looking at this mm -hmm. conversation about mm -hmm. uh, women empowerment and mm -hmm. women in leadership, just creating those mm -hmm. safe spaces mm -hmm. moving forward. Maybe you could tell mm -hmm. us a bit about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, administratively, yes. uh, before I come to the programs, administratively, one of the things, of course, in recruitment, and, and we have a policy already in place in terms of gender uh, equality, ensuring that our employees at the workplace um, have that equal footing. And so we, we ensure that even in our recruitment, um, yes. we, are, we are conscious about the, that gender uh, balance. That's one, administratively. Uh, but also, number two, we have various programs um, in, t in terms of... Um, 
Because as the, as the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, uh, we deal with the promotion and protection of human rights mm. across the country. And human rights are as diverse in every space. Yes. Uh, so some of the programs, we do investigations. Mm -hmm. um, so we receive quite a number of complaints, um, thousands of complaints uh, per year from men and women uh, on various issues. Mm -hmm. And we process them and we carry out investigations. Uh, so um, quite a number of women come to report to us and you can do so we have an email address at complaints at knchr.org mm -hmm. uh, where you can write but also to mention that we work closely um, with the National Gender and Equality Commission uh, w uh, commonly known as NGEC, which is the, then the constitutional body that specifically addresses discrimination against women so we do that in a, in a, in a system of referrals um, um, then we also do um, economic and social cultural rights. We are very keen. Right now we have been really working with the, uh, with the health institutions, working with the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. just to try and monitor our institutions um, in terms of mental health, in terms of the doctor capacity, especially now that we've been having uh, doctor strikes, mm -hmm. just, just to check our hospitals. The crisis. See the yeah. crisis. Because this affects women, maternal you know, health and, and, and all that. So we've been doing a lot of that. We've been doing, carrying out a lot of public awareness and education across the counties. Mm. Uh, we are in five regional offices. Uh, so we carry out a lot of sensitization programs around that. We've been dealing with um, working closely with various stakeholders, including parliament, uh, to try and you know change our laws uh, yes. so towards that we, we prepare a lot of advisories we've been working to especially in uh, on the field of disabilities uh, we are working with uh, you know parliamentarians to see how we can get rid of uh, of, of some laws that, that that are not that are actually discriminatory uh, mm -hmm. for instance for, to, towards persons with disabilities and we've been working also closely with the office of the of the um, of the attorney general uh, mm. to, to be able to do that. We carry out also a uh, lot of work um, on reforms. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so we work closely with judiciary, um, the National Council on Administration of Justice, we work closely with the police, uh, we, with various other actors just to try and ensure even the issues we are talking about regarding justice bottlenecks, yeah. that you know, they are more sensitized, more empowered uh, to be able to be, um, to be of you know, better service uh, to, 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 our, uh, to, to Kenyans. Um, so, so those are you know, basically um, in, in a very quick snapshot yes. some of the things we do. All right. Remember, we also welcome you to share with us your thoughts. We thoroughly appreciate them and we address them as we go on with this discussion all about women in leadership today in line with the theme, the global theme uh, for celebrating the International Women's Day. Share with us your thoughts. Remember the official hashtag globally also is hashtag choose to challenge and then you finish up with whatever you choose to challenge as an individual. And remember, this is not just a conversation about women women for women. This is a conversation about women with all both genders involved in this particular conversation to just make sure that the issues that were being addressed 110 years ago that we are still dealing with in this day and time are no longer a reality in the near future because looking at the information that was put out uh, on the United Nations website is that mm. if we keep up with the current way that mm. we are looking at these barriers, it would take us another 130 years mm. to just deal with these barriers that were being dealt with 110 years ago. Mm. So that would consequently mean 240 years mm. to look at these issues. And this comes to now, um, as we wind this conversation, mm. when it comes to... Um, those accelerated efforts and changes that we need to put in play mm. to address the current issues and keep up with them as time continues to change. What would be your advice to this end, very briefly, as we get to uh, close the conversation? Thank you. Uh, yes, the accelerated uh, uh, you know, measures or the temporary special measures are necessary. Please let's get um, um, women on the table because they bring a very unique um, perspective, perspective yes. to the table. And so I, agree, um, I, I don't actually buy in the thing that, well, I'll represent your issues as a woman state because remember there's also the element of participation mm. that we need the people there to be able to articulate and also that women bring a special um, um, you know, input on the table because of their you know, issue of marginalization because of their perspectives as women, there is just something they, they, they add to the table mm. that would uh, you know, go a, a, long, a way long way into boosting. But also I must be quick to add here that numbers are okay, but they're not the ultimate savior. Mm -hmm. I go back to the point number one. 
that until we change our stereotypes, because we've had cases, it starts with the mind. It starts with the mind. Um, if you um, actually have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> conversation with some of the nominated uh, members of parliament, they'll tell you it's uh, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are treated like a you know lesser being. Um, you, you don't get to chair uh, uh, co uh, committees of, of these parliaments. So we, we are looking for substantive equality, not just formal equality. You are mm -hmm. there, so shut up. Substantive representation, substantive equality. So you will find that, um, yes, you are put there, but even in terms of there's still a stigma associated with you are nominated or you, know, you are brought in because of affirmative action, which mm -hmm. should not be the case, which takes me now to that point number one that we have to do um, with the gender stereotypes. I'll also quickly add one thing here. Yes. That Rwanda, for instance, which is Rwanda, which is um, hailed as one of the countries with the highest representation of women in mm -hmm. parliament at 64 percent. They'll tell you that on the ground, that has not necessarily translated into equality and on, the, on, the, on mm -hmm. the ground. So it's easier to have the numbers. Um, but first of all, how substantively are our, our women and girls, are you just being given flower rolls? Are, are, you, are your points being shot down because you are a woman? So, so that for me is key. So I, I would say that numbers are good. Let them get, the, the, let them first of all equalize. Yes. But number two, that for substantive equality to be realized within the country, then we need to go beyond the numbers and be able to work on the structural impediments that have been holding our women back. And that includes the customary, there's gender stereotypes mm -hmm. that you can't do, you are a woman, um, and, and all these kind of socioeconomic inhibitions that actually prevent women from uh, being able to participate. I completely agree with you. Going back to historical injustices, culture, socioeconomic challenges, violence, representation and leadership as well as education and ultimately stereotyping. Those are issues we need to deal away with in order to see a progressive uh, conversation and not just a conversation but also the reality on ground when it comes to addressing these age-old issues. We have been speaking with Petronella Mukaindo who is the Deputy Director and Head of Research and Compliance Division working with the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Again, if you have any complaints that you would like to address with them, you can always send them through the email that she did give. That is complaint at knhcr.org. That's correct? Yes. Haki. So, haki. Yeah. Haki at knhcr.org. All right. Yes. Uh, and this is regardless of your gender, mind you. These are human rights issues so feel free to um, reach out if you have any concerns now before as we uh, close today's uh, conversation uh, I welcome your thoughts and just to read some of what we have received so far we have Emil 456 who says the pandemic recovery is our chance to leave behind generations of exclusion and inequalities it is time to build an equal future and this involves a job for everyone and for the benefit of everyone well in line with this year's theme about women in leadership achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. With that, we will just want to put a cap on this uh, particular conversation and consequently on this program. But thank you so much for being with us through and through. We have been majorly focusing on this date that we are celebrating. Today being the 8th of March, it is International Women's Day. 110 years later, what are the gains? What are those... Um, efforts that we need to accelerate just ensure equality for both genders keep using the hashtag choose to challenge and share what you choose to challenge this day i'm jane Wamboy. have a lovely day god bless see you tomorrow